Well, how are we doing, everybody? I hope we're all good. It's uh, 7th of January again. It's my second video of the day. And we're here to take a look at the weather prospects, in particular for tomorrow and part of Tuesday as well. There is the potential for some uh, snow across some central and southern parts of the UK. And we're just going to have a little look about it. We're going to have a look at the when, the where, and most importantly, the how. Yep, you read the title, Lake Effect. We're going to go in and talk about that. So without further ado, let's just take a look at the current situation. The colder air now is pushing in from the north and the east. And these are your current temperatures around the UK. Look at that. It is struggling. Some places in Ireland are no higher than zero, plus one degrees. And yeah, obviously your usual sort of high altitude stations on Cairngorm Summit and Annick Moore are below zero. So yeah, it just goes to show what happens when you cut off that Atlantic feed in January. Things turn cold pretty quickly. Right, so we've looked at the current temperatures and now we start to look east for our temperatures because this is where the weather is going to be coming from for the next few days. Now, apologies to Northern England and Scotland for this forecast. This is specifically related to really the snow potential for England and perhaps Wales, but more especially the southern half of the UK. I'm not forgetting you, Scotland. You've had your fun recently and I no doubt we'll be having more fun next week. So, um, yeah, we'll concentrate keeping it nice and honed in on the south of the UK. So we're looking east for the temperatures currently sitting around about zero or just below zero now across the continent, down across the low countries, down across Belgium and also parts of northeast France. And if you want to track how things are going, well, this was the scene yesterday afternoon um, in a place called Assen in the Netherlands, in northern in the northern Netherlands. And over there it was much like we are in the UK this afternoon, rather cloudy, but then overnight things did start to turn colder. That cold air did move in from the east. The rain turned to snow. And today, if we were as soon as we got light, there we go. The sun came up this morning, but they'd had a light snow cover. And I think this is probably going to be the case for many parts of southeast England in the course of the next few days. Always a bit of a mugs game trying to predict snow level depths. But I think we're in with a bit of a shout of a dusting. So the forecast earlier was talking about things being seasonal. And I think maybe things might look a bit seasonal as well. But the big question is, as well, how do you get snow when you've got so much high pressure around? You know, at the moment, you've got a, a barometer that's sitting right across the right-hand side of the dial, 1,030 across the uh, south of the UK, 1,040 across the north. How can you do that when pressure is so high? Well, two words, and they are, well, three words, actually, lake effect snow yep you've read it there lake effect snow it's not just a canadian thing it can affect oceans it can affect bays as well and we're just going to now look at the formation of it and really in a nutshell it forms where you have very cold air moving over a warmer mass of water the lower layer of the air is heated by the lake or sea picks up water vapor from the lake or sea rises through the cold air, the vapour then freezes, and then it's deposited on the leeward on the shore. So if your temperature is cold enough, then obviously that will turn into snow, and that's where your lake effect comes in. There are several factors, though, that need to be determined for successful lake effect snow, and we're going to take a look at them. We've got instability, we've got fetch, and we've got wind shear. They're the three most important factors. And we're going to take a little look at that. So first of all, it talks about instability. It talks about there being a requirement for a temperature difference of 13 degrees between the boundary layer, in this case, the sea surface temperature, and the 850 millibar level. This is the one I always bang on about 1500 metres up in the sky. So let's take a look. Do we have a temperature gradient of greater than 13 degrees? Well, first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the sea temperature and we're going to rush over towards where these showers are forming. And it looks, well, it's fair to say that the sea surface temperature is sitting somewhere around about 10 or 11 degrees at the moment. So hold that in your head. Hold the number 11 in your head. Right. 
We're now going to look at that temperature of the 850, uh, 850 temperature, a meter up in the sky, or should we say a mile up in the sky. And if we just run through, see this lower uh, level cold that is there, but look at the upper level. We'll just put the 850s on there for tomorrow. And there you'll see, look at that. That is an exceptionally cold uh, body of air coming across the southern North Sea down across England. So we had, what, a sea surface temperature of, say, 12. We've got an 850 of, let's say, minus 11. So what's 12 at 11? Right, that's 23. So we've met the first parameter. We've exceeded 13 quite comfortably. Right, the second thing is called fetch. Now, fetch is the distance that then this moisture will then travel over the sea. So let's take a look at fetch. You need generally about 60 miles um, for this air mass to be picking up moisture before it drops it on the coasts. And just a little check with Google. I've gone in there. I've taken the Thames estuary. I've taken the point at where these showers are likely to be forming tomorrow. The air starts off dry off the Netherlands, but then, as I say, it picked up moisture across the North Sea. It travels southwestwards in the flow, and it looks as though we got a hundred miles of fetch. So I think we're fair to say that we've exceeded the sixty miles. So yeah, we we tick that box as well. Right, what's the next thing we want to look at? Moisture. Right, let's have a little look at moisture. So once again, you can't get the showers without moisture. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at the relative humidity at 1500 meters or 850 halopascals again. You'll see that this air mass is inherently dry, isn't it? And this is why it's cold air. But because you've got this cold body of water, this upper cold pool moving across the north, southern North Sea, it is picking up moisture. But we do need to see if that moisture is going to be able to travel across the UK. So we just track that through. This is at three o'clock tomorrow morning. This is at six o'clock. This is at nine o'clock. This is at midday. This is at 1500 hours. This is at 1800 hours and this is at 2100 hours tomorrow. So I think it's fair to say that we've definitely got the moisture potential, 100% relative humidity at 1500 meters. So we tick that box as well. We have moisture. Right. The other thing I haven't mentioned is the word shear. I don't want to get too technical with this, but shear is the, the wind direction. What you want to do is to maintain um, snow streamers potential you need that air mass to be blowing in the same direction at pretty much different layers in the atmosphere so this will be the the uh, the air or should we say the wind direction at the surface and I'm very simply just going to take that up to again a mile up in the sky you really want to see that wind blowing in the same direction I think it's fair to say it is there's a very slight shear so you're a bit more north easterly on the upper level air, but at the surface, it is, it's all fairly academic. I think we're okay with wind shear. So long as you're below about 45 degree wind shear, your, your showers will form. So, right, it looks as though we've got the parameters in place. We're now going to take a look at the various models to see how they want to play this out. And I've included the southwest of England on this. I had some very good feedback yesterday from someone saying, thanks very much, but you cut off Cornwall and Devon. So yeah, I've taken that on board. And we're now going to take a look at the icons take on the uh, wintry precipitation tomorrow. We'll start at midnight. And what we'll do is we'll run this through for three or four different models, and then we can decide what we reckon the chances are for snow tomorrow are. So here we go. Let's start off with the icon, right? Three o'clock in the morning, just a few sort of uh, showers starting to sort of come in across the Southern North Sea by, let's have a look, six o'clock in the morning, just a few snow showers just starting to come on to the Thames estuary. And then, but yeah, by nine o'clock tomorrow morning, certainly it appears that uh, there will be snow falling across Kent mainly showery, mainly light. But once again, if you get under one of these streamers, there is always the potential for more enhanced precipitation and perhaps more in the way of heavier snow. So this is the midday look with Icon. Let's just track that. It does move it westwards, doesn't it? Across southern England throughout the course of the afternoon 
and the evening and we'll just track this through so this is nine o'clock tomorrow evening notice also parts of the south midlands uh, and some of the home counties are also in the uh, in the fray for this so move that through to tuesday at nine in the morning tuesday sorry, six in the morning tuesday at nine in the morning and then tuesday by midday so yeah it looks like that is all out the way so yeah the icon looked like Snow showers in the east, slowly pushing westwards towards southwest England tomorrow night, clearing early Tuesday. Right, we've looked at the icon. We'll now have a look at the GFS. If you remember yesterday, GFS were the party poopers, weren't they, with regard to any snow potential? We'll have a little look what they're see what they're thinking today. So again, we'll start with three o'clock tomorrow morning. Looks like they're going for a few flurries, doesn't it? Coming into north and east Kent at six in the morning. So Similar to the icon, again, timing's fairly similar towards the Thames Estuary. It looks like around nine o'clock in the morning, a few sort of snow flurries pushing in. And then, yeah, it looks like there's going to be a bit of a Thames stream, possibly setting up for a while, becoming a little bit more persistent during the afternoon with perhaps some more snow flurries further east. And some of these getting down towards like West Sussex, Hampshire, the Isle of Wight, parts of Dorset. And, well, if we just push this through to six o'clock, tomorrow evening nine o'clock tomorrow evening we're going into the early hours of tuesday now once again it takes those snow flurries right down the south coast to affect parts of south devon and parts of um, south cornwall as well so maybe a bit of a dusting on dartmoor as well from the gfs right the next model we're going to take a look at is the ecm so we'll go back to monday We'll go back to midnight. We'll run this one through. Right, and a caution with the ECM model, they don't actually show the shading um, when it comes to snow. So just treat the blue colour as precipitation and assume that this will be falling as snow because the upper air is cold enough. So once again, six o'clock in the morning, looks like a few snow flows coming into Kent. Um, they look, start to intensify over perhaps parts of southeast Kent for a while. And then, yeah, as with the other two models, snow flurries will be moving westwards towards London, again, along the south coast, the Isle of Wight, parts of Dorset during the afternoon. But they always generally stay to the south, don't they? And perhaps, yeah, throughout the course of the afternoon and once again the evening, that risk transfers along the English Channel down towards Devon and Cornwall. Notice again with the, uh, well, with the ECM, just the risk of a few flurries as well further north across parts of the Midlands and maybe parts of Wales as well. So, yeah, a little bit more extensive with their thoughts. And once again, the snow risk eventually pushes away from parts of South Cornwall and South Devon on Tuesday morning. Right. We're going to have a little look at the gem. This is the penultimate one. We'll have a look at the UKV before we close that one out and uh, and then we'll we'll call it a wrap. So. Uh, if you remember the GEM, the Canadian model, they were getting a little bit overexcited about this yesterday, weren't they? Um, what I've decided to do is I've decided to, to discount all of these little speckly bits of snow. Um, I'm going to concentrate on the bluish areas because I think that's probably a little bit more representative. And in well, certainly in agreement with the other models, six o'clock in the morning, once again, looking like some snow flurries will be coming into Kent, East Kent, North Kent, towards the Thames Estuary once again. There is a signal, isn't there? It's quite consistent that this band of snow showers will be pushing westwards across, uh, certainly starting across Kent and then moving westwards throughout the course of the afternoon and into the evening. So once again, yeah, there you go. Look, more snow showers. Again, they're quite keen, aren't they, the gem for, you know, more widespread snow showers. Certainly up towards Suffolk, parts of Norfolk, towards the home counties, and towards the Midlands, South Midlands. So, um, yeah, the gem's still quite excited about it. Um, but again, in agreement with all the other models, they will be pushing that snow risk further away to the west, down towards potentially Devon and Cornwall by the early hours of Tuesday morning before it all clears out of the way. Right, we're nearly there. The last model I want to take a look at is the UKV. Um, this was run at three o'clock this morning. I'm just going to take this through uh, to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, to three o'clock tomorrow morning. <coughs> Once again, 
we've got a full suite of uh, models showing the onset of some snowshowers into Kent around about six in the morning. Yes, we have. Um, just keep an eye down in Kent and then throughout the course of the morning, those showers, they intensify, become a bit more extensive across the southeast of parts of Suffolk, uh, Surrey, Suffolk, um, you know, those sorts of places down towards Sussex. And then once again, they tend to sort of perhaps intensify for a time around the middle part of the day before slowly again transferring west. So this is the situation at noon tomorrow. Them snow showers continuing across parts of the southeast of England again, perhaps getting up towards the South Midlands. So, yeah, I think whereas yesterday it was looking like it was just a southeast England event, it certainly looks like now there is potential for other parts of southern England to see a few snow flurries, a few snow showers, perhaps a dusting, and maybe even the South Midlands, certainly down towards the southwest on Tuesday morning. Before it all clears out of the way, the drier air comes in from the continent ahead of a mainly sunny and cold Tuesday. So that is the forecast. I hope you've all found it useful. Um, I think, you know, it's always good to have a little bit of a chat about, you know, the dynamics behind the weather. It's a lot more exciting than just looking at charts and someone spouting out the chances of snow. It's good to look at the bigger picture, look at the alternatives and really just allow us to make our own sort of like judgment. So I'm going to get back to uh, getting this published i'm going to settle down for the afternoon i'm going to watch the fa cup arsenal and liverpool and then i'm going to have a roast dinner um i might be back tomorrow with a few little snow pickies if we do get the snow um, but in the meantime thank you all very much for watching please do your usual like subscribe share all the great things like that and uh, once again thanks for the support it's much appreciated ciao for now